Hey class, how are you doing today? <clears throat> My name is Mr. Woodman and we're, today we're going to go over topic 0 0.1, the origins of civilization. So we're going to get started with the vocabulary. We're going to start off with anthropology, archaeology, paleolithic, neolithic, and polytheistic. So here you're going to start seeing a lot of different root words. So for example, here is going to be ology, ology, which means study of, right? Lithic and lithic are going to mean something very similar as well. Neo means new, paleo means old, poly, right? Polytheistic, theism is the belief in a religion or a belief system. And then poly means more than one. So poly is like polynomials in math, right? So polytheistic, and we're going to go over what that means later, okay? So let's go start learning about our past. Anthropology is the study of the development of people and their societies, okay? Archaeology is the specialized branch of anthropology that studies past cultures through material remains. Right now, this is the biggest difference between archaeology and anthropology. An anthropologist is someone who studies, right, past cultures, cultures that have happened, cultures that have happened, or are, you know, they could still be happening, but they're past um, iterations of themselves and how they developed, right? How did these people living in this area developed into what they are now, right? Anthropologies are people that are going to look at the big picture, the big topic picture, right? How did these groups of people develop in this certain way? What, what variables led to that, that different um, change from that area to another area? Right, stuff like that. Now, an archaeologist is someone who is also an anthropologist, right? But it's more specialized. Now, how is it more specialized? An archaeologist is someone who studies cultures through material remains, right? So, an anthropology just studies with everything, right? An archaeologist is someone who actually gathers different materials, the different evidence from the past. So, for example, um, I gave this example in class, but the idea of of uh, someone very similar to Indiana Jones, right? Indiana Jones is a, you know, is a person who goes around in, in lost, you know, long lost uh, temples and pyramids and he finds treasure and he uses these treasures that he finds and different maps to find different cultures and a better understanding of how people live, right? That's what an archeologist is. Someone who uses, for example, coins or old maps or old books anything that's a material something that you can hold right to study the past now archaeologists slash historians learn details about our past through artifacts and written evidence so like i said earlier anything that's a physical object that you can hold in your hand that's left from a different time period that's an artifact now written evidence could be a map it could be a letter it could be pretty much anything it could be a book um Today, right, we're seeing new different types of written evidence that could be a post online, that could be a blog, it could be an email, right? If the emails from 1990, right, that could be a, an artifact, it could be a written evidence. So, so things change as time advances, right? The ideas of what evidence can be is growing with it. So this question here, what are some examples of artifacts and written evidence, right? I just gave those out to you. So now let's start talking about what the Neolithic Revolution was, right? But before we talk about the Neolithic Revolution, we got to talk about the Paleolithic period, right? Now, the Paleolithic period is the old, 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 as far back in history as humanly possible before, we, you know, at the turn of us becoming human, right? Our idea of Homo erectus, right? We really got out of, of just like, ooh, caveman, right? Into more of a human type of form. So this is going to be also known as the old stone age, right? Early modern humans were very, very nomadic. Now, what does that mean? Early humans didn't have homes. They didn't have homes. Right? What they would do is they would go from location to location and, and consume whatever resources were there. Once those resources ran out, they would move on to the next place, right? So early modern humans were very nomadic. They were hunter gatherers, right? So we would have one part of the population that would go out and actively hunt for food then you would have the other population that would actually go out and start to gather, whether it's nuts or berries or fruits or vegetables, whatever it could possibly be, that's what they would do. They'll go out and they would take turns either hunting and gathering. That's what hunter gatherers are. Now in those, in this period of time, humans developed language. They used fire to cook. They made clothes and made some stone weapons. 
Mm-hmm. Right now, all of these things are very, very important in the development of the human, right? The human as we know it today, especially the second one, um, the used fire to cook. That's going to be huge, right? Because science states that when, when humans started cooking its meat, the, the, the change of the chemistry of the food, the different proteins that were created with the use of fire um, developed our brain into what it is today. Right. So as as generations and generations of people started cooking their food, the developmental of the the development of the brain started to increase and get more and more complex to eventually what we have today. Now, the second the, the another thing that's like sneakily very important is the fact that there's evidence that they buried their dead. Now, if if there's evidence of that, that is going to promote the idea or the belief in the spiritual world or life after death. Um, if you look at mother, not, not mother nature, but if you look at nature in, in general, there are very few, very, very few species of animals that actually go ahead and bury their dead or, you know, or ceremoniously place them somewhere. Um, there's, there, are, there are cases that, you know, like elephants and stuff will remember where a, a loved one was dead, um, but they won't bury them, right? Because the idea of burying a person is the idea of, right? Like, think about the mummies, think of like ancient Egypt, right? If you bury your dead, if you put your dead away, it's to preserve their body, it's to honor them, right? So the idea that they're thinking beyond just eating and hunting and, you know, making babies, once they start thinking beyond this, that's going to start changing the way civilization is focused. Now, this is what it's going to look like, right? Typical, you know, idea of what we think of as the cavemen, like they're literally living in a cave, right? Now you're going to see that they're hunter gatherers. So here the men are going to come back, or these men here are going to come back with a, what looks like a deer, right? They hunted that deer. They actually went out there and killed the deer to bring back for the food. Here you're going to see them cooking, right? Here you're going to see them with a fire right here. Here they're going to be being creative. They're here, they're drawing out what they're hunting this right here is an idea that they started to worship or start to to um give high respect to the animals because they know without this protein source they wouldn't survive they wouldn't be able to sustain themselves so they're going to give a lot of respect to that now here you're going to see them making stone tools whether that's going to be a hatchet right like an axe for example what they're using here she's using a knife um, over here, they're holding spears. Whether they're creating that, they're doing that here with stones. They're not using steel. They're not using anything like that here. And here, what they're doing is they're skinning an animal, right? They're making their clothes. They're making pelts, mm-hmm. okay? So this is very important to the idea of them, right, surviving, barely surviving on the edge of the world, right, in caves. And that's going to change relatively pretty quickly. They're going to change pretty quickly. So let's talk about the Neolithic Revolution. Now, the Neolithic period, which is called the New Stone Age, took place about 12,000 years ago. Okay, that's a very long time. But in reality, it's not that long of a time. Right, they are going to learn how to farm. Farming leads to settlements and specialization. Now, what are settlements? Right, Settlements are what we think of more as homes. Right, We think more of, hey, we're going to settle down here and create a life for ourselves. Now, since they learned how to farm, they learned how to grow food. Now that you don't need to go hunting and gathering and the food is there all the time and you know exactly when to harvest it, you kind of lose your job. So if your job was to go hunt and now you don't need to hunt, you could spend your time doing something else. You can specialize in something else, right? That's what specialization means. So for example, if, if I'm really good at making baskets, I could specialize in being a basket weaver. If I'm really, really good at farming, I am the farmer now. Stuff like that, if that makes any sense. Now, domestication of plants and animals. Now, domestication means we were able to figure out how to use it for our benefit, how to plant it. So, for example, wild corn, right? If you're talking about the Americas, corn grew in abundance. However, grew, the corn grew scattered, right? It just grew wherever it wanted to grow, kind of like weeds. So, what we figured out was, hey, what if we get those seeds and plant them in a row. Once we figured out that, once we figured out that we can control where they grow, that's the domestication of plants. Now the domestication of animals is something that we see every day. If you have a dog, if you have a pet dog, if you have a cat, right? That's a domesticated animal. You, you trained it to be at home. You trained it to listen to you, right? 
So what they would do is they would get these massive farms, not farms, but like, you know, farmland, they'd make little pins and stuff. And they would capture horses, they would capture pigs and, and livestock, right? Livestock are pigs or chickens or cows and stuff like that. And they would, they would breed them, they would make more, that way they always had a supply of food. Now political structures started to form. Now with the, with the rise of specialization, now people could start figuring out, okay, well, who's actually in charge, right? If you're in charge, what are you in charge of? And so on and so forth. Now there's more time to actually think about stuff like that. And when you have time to think, that's when you're gonna start having religious ideas start to spread. Now we already know that religion and the idea of an afterlife was already present before the Neolithic period, the new period back in the old stone age. When you really have time to think, that's when you have time to start um, figuring out what you wanna do. You start thinking about, oh, what happens when I die? And that's usually when you start creating religions. Well, hopefully I go to a thing called heaven or hopefully I get reincarnated and become something else, right? That's when you start having these aha moments. That's when you start having these, these far out ideas is when you have the time. Because when you're hunting and you're trying to survive, you don't really have the time to think about stuff like that. You'd be surprised. So now this is what a picture would look like for a more Neolithic era, you know, tribe, I guess. Here, you're going to notice that this is very, 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 very important. It's by a river. Now, why would you want to settle along a river, right? Here's a hint. Water, 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 water. We need water to survive. If it wasn't for water, the Imperial Valley wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for canals, right, we wouldn't be here. There'd be no food. It'd be a desert still. Now, what you're going to see here is he is domesticating plants, right? This is going to be wheat. You grind up wheat and that's how you get bread. That's how you get tortillas, right? Tortillas are corn. But, you know, you get the same idea. That's how you get food. You get nutrients, calories. Here, you're going to see a man with a tool. And you're going to see him walking around with, a, you know, with a dog, a wolf dog thing. It's domesticated. That means they became part of our tribe. You see here, there's going to be cows. Um, and right here is a pig and so on and so forth. Here, you're going to so you see houses because, you know, they're staying there. They're going to build houses because they don't need to leave anymore because you can't drain the resources if you can replant things. So that's going to be the difference. Very, very stark difference. Now, civilization begins, right? So when you think of a civilization, right, you think of Western civilization, you think of empires, you think of kingdoms, right? That's all going to start forming very, very rapidly. When people start farming, people are going to get grouped together. The population is going to grow. And eventually, you're going to have very complex civilizations. Now, they're all, right, all of them are going to have some very, very, very few things in common. The first one, our civilizations are highly organized and complex societies, and they all deliver, whoop, let's go back, and they all develop near major rivers. So those major rivers and these areas are going to be Egypt, the Middle East, India, and China, right? Those are going to be the major ones. Those are the major, 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 major ones. That's where civilization is going to begin. Now, the rivers provided fresh water, transportation, and rich soils. Rich soils mean more food. More food creates surplus, right? So if you have more food, there's leftovers. So you don't have to worry about making more and more and more because you have leftovers. You can stockpile your food. Now, you can make a more population because there's more food available, right? Surplus is used to feed the growing population. So the more food you're able to cultivate, the more people you have. The more people you have, the more food you can cultivate. So eventually, you're going to start seeing a spiral, right? That's how that's going to work. Now, here's going to be a map of where all the major early civilizations are going to be. They're going to be in Egypt. Now, what river is, is next to Egypt? It's going to be the Nile. Now, Mesopotamia is going to be lucky because they're going to have two rivers. They're going to have the Tigris right here and the Euphrates. The area, the area in here, right, the area in between those rivers is going to be absolutely crucial for the survival of the people that live there because the soil is going to be extremely rich. You're going to have all the water you're possibly ever going to want because you have two rivers and so on and so forth. Here, you're going to have the, let's move this real quick. Here, you're going to have another one in the Indus Valley next to India. You're going to have the Indus River, right? A lot of it's named after the river. And then here, you're going to have the Chinese, the, in China, the Chinese uh, civilization, you're going to have the Huanghe or the Yellow River. Okay, that's what it's called, the Huanghe or, Ye or Yellow River. So that's where they are. This is where civilization is going to start, right? I'm not saying this is where humans come from, but this is where they're going to group up, right, and start civilizations. 
Now, these are gonna be the questions that I want you to answer in your bell work for the day. Which civilizations grew near river valleys? We just talked about that right now. What does Neolithic mean? And what does Paleolithic mean? Okay, hopefully that's simple enough. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Talk to you soon. Have some fun. Drink some water. It's hot outside. Bye-bye.